Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 28th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide you with an overview of California's most recent statewide climate assessment. And I'm just going to drill down into some of the points that were highlighted by this comprehensive assessment. I highly recommend that you follow the link and take a look at this assessment. And I'm also going to provide some, some framing and some caveats with regard to this assessment because the assessment is, is quite dire in the fact that it only looks at mid-range and worse scenarios for human greenhouse gas emissions through fossil fuel burning we are not presently locked into mid-range to worse scenarios. It is possible to turn away from those pathways at this time. Although in order to do that, we need to rather rapidly transition to a renewable energy and clean energy based economy. I'm gonna go ahead and read this paragraph from the assessment and go through some, some highlights. The assessment notes that changes in global and California temperatures depend on the accumulation of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping gases emitted from human activities in the atmosphere. The future emissions and resulting accumulation of greenhouse gases could take a range of pathways depending on the, the success of international and local efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The warming and other changes experienced under different future conditions are projected using representative concentration pathways. RCPs do not represent a specific policy, demographic, or economic future, but are in, in, defined in terms of their total radiative forcing in watts per meter squared at the top of the atmosphere by 2020. The fourth assessment uses two RCPs from the fifth Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Assessment Report on Climate Change. The higher of the two RCPs represents accumulated greenhouse gas concentrations under a higher emissions, and I'll add the caveat, fossil fuel burning pathway or RCP 8.5, commonly understood as business as usual scenario that would result in atmospheric CO2 concentrations exceeding 900 parts per million by 2100, or more than triple that level present in the atmosphere before human emissions began to accumulate. The more moderate greenhouse gas concentration pathway, a scenario where greenhouse gas emissions rise until the mid 21st century and then decline, results in a CO2 concentration of around 555 parts per million by 2100. So these are the two pathways that this assessment is looking at from basically a bad climate change scenario to a, a terrible climate change scenario, one in which fossil fuel burning and related carbon emissions do not peak either until mid-century or in which fossil fuel burning rates continue to increase through much of this century. So the two of the worst case scenarios. So what this study found is that under the worst case fossil fuel burning or greenhouse gas scenarios for California, the mortality risk for those 65 and older increased by times 10. The number of, of heat waves increased by, by 2050 to times and resulted in times two or times three as many deaths as a result of heat waves. These um, heat waves alone were expected to produce about 10,300 initial deaths per year by 20. 50 under under the worst case fossil fuel burning scenario and average temperatures by 2100 were expected daily high temperatures were expected to increase by 8.8 .8 degrees fahrenheit 
So some rather severe impacts just from heat and loss of air quality alone. It's also worth noting that these two scenarios, these two higher range fossil fuel burning scenarios produced between one and two meters of sea level rise for the California coast. And this resulted not only in more severe flooding in certain regions as shown in this graphic of San Diego Bay, but the erosion of 67% of, of the California coastline, including many, many highly populated areas. In addition, increased wildfires has been a trend throughout California as global temperatures have increased into the range of one to 1.2 degrees Celsius above 19th century averages. But this assessment found that the average area burned by wildfires under the worst case fossil fuel burning scenario by 2100 would increase 77% or nearly double that of today. So some very severe impacts to California in this assessment if fossil fuel burning continues through to increase through mid-century and related greenhouse gas emissions continue to increase through mid-century or continue to increase through the late century. I'm just going to go ahead and read a quote from The Guardian, which covered this article. I'm going to go ahead and link, I'm sorry, covered this assessment. I'm going to go ahead and link the article because I want to, I want to talk about a bit of the reaction to this report. Um, one of the, 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 the commenters that have been quoted uh, why, um, notes that I, I won't say that I'm hopeful. I would like to feel hopeful, but I don't see it happening right now. I don't see the politicians stumbling over themselves to make the change. So, so to be clear, this, this future for California can be avoided. And and the way that we avoid it is we very rapidly peak human carbon emissions and very rapidly start reducing carbon emissions from fossil fuel burning so that we avoid the RCP 4.5 through RCP 8.5 pathways. And these pathways are absolutely avoidable. Um, just want to note this statement from Dr. Michael Mann, who is, in my opinion, taking the lead on advocating for responsible action by politicians to human force climate change. And Dr. Michael Mann notes in a conversation yesterday to Michael Ventris, who is a, um, is, is a, is a weather expert, a meteorologist. He, he says, thanks, Michael. Predictions are hard, especially about the future but much of the uncertainty is associated with our choices, particularly regarding continued fossil fuel burning. This graphic from our book, Dire Predictions, is useful. So it's worth noting that if the world sets out on a path, both through policy, through individual action, through corporate action, and through action by leaders to cut fossil fuel burning as soon as possible, to peak fossil fuel burning as soon as possible and rapidly reduce global carbon emissions, then this dire future scenario, which has been termed by some as apocalyptic, can be avoided. However, we need politicians and leaders who are resolved to take that path. And presently, Many of the leaders are fighting against climate action. We can't control their choices, but what we can do is do our best to vote them out of office and to bring forward more and more climate leaders who are resolved to respond to human-caused climate change, primarily to drive a rapid energy transition. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.